Coming up on Smart Tech Today, Matthew Casanelli and I talk about customizing your iOS 14 home screen. That's right, it's custom icons up and down and all around. Plus, we talk about Google's new option in iOS to read articles aloud and Amazon rebranding free time to Amazon Kids, plus, of course, Amazon Kids Plus. It's all that, plus a very loud segment with this air duster and so much more on Smart Tech Today. Smart Tech Today is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Twit. This episode of Smart Tech Today is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon's wireless earbuds are perfect for listening to audiobooks, music, or podcasts. Go to buyraycon.com slash STT and get 15% off your order. And by Mint Mobile. Get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 30 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Just go to mintmobile.com slash STT. And by Casper. From award-winning mattresses to pillows, sheets, and duvets, Casper transforms the way we sleep one snooze at a time. Go to casper.com slash STT and use code STT for $100 off select mattresses. Hello and welcome back to Smart Tech Today, where we explain the exciting, the dynamic, and the sometimes confusing and maybe sometimes country subject that is the Internet of Things. I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I am Matthew Casnelli. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. I love the accent. With, with the Northern California accent you have there. That's <laughs> really, oh man, that is accurate. I could almost pinpoint that to, uh, could you say the word watermelon for me? Watermelon. Oh my God, are you from Berkeley? Hmm, wow. Thanks for giving away my upset. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. What I meant was <laughs> Oakland. He's from Oakland. Yes. Uh, I mean, I'm technically in both, actually. Um, it, oh, like my see, house is okay. I shouldn't say that. I'm not gonna reveal any more personal information than I need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You did worse. You did more than I did. I I didn't know that. Uh, I I've always kind of wondered about Berkeley and Oakland and how those two sort of interact. It reminds me of uh, where I live in or where I live where I lived in St. Joseph, Missouri. Um, it's close to Kansas City, Missouri. And then, of course, there's Kansas City, Kansas. And all of these just sort of flirt with each other right along the border there. Mm-hmm. And so it can get very confusing, including uh, sometimes, uh, you know, leaders of, of the free world who get confused about which mm-hmm. state belongs to which which city belongs to which state, rather. Um, anyway, we're not here to talk geography because I was terrible at geography in school, so I have no business talking about it. Um, <laughs> instead, we're going to talk about smart stuff. And I think yeah. up first, uh, before we even get into some of the other... Th- oh, actually, you have it last, but I want to make it first. So let's talk about sure. it first. Um I have seen all over the internet, including from some dear friends and uh, this morning, my my partner uh, asking me about it. Everybody has realized that uh, along with widgets to customize your iOS 14 home screen, uh, folks are able to do what two groups have been able to do before this. The two groups are Android users and iOS jailbreakers who have been able to customize their home screens in such a way that everything matches their aesthetic. Um, One example that I saw from a dear friend of mine, she's sort of, um, if you took a vampire and you took the concept of hubba bubba bubble gum and you mix them together in a uh, purple bejeweled mortar and pestle, pestle, excuse me. Hmm. Um, and whatever came out of that, the, the powdered substance would be what she is. And so her home screen is this sort of soft pink color, but yes. all of the app icons are kind of scary, um, scary and I, I, unsettling images hmm. and things like that. 
they all are, you know, it's Safari and it's Skype and or not Skype. You know what I mean? It's all the different apps. So people have realized that they can use your favorite app, Shortcuts, to essentially launch apps, but then make a custom icon. Um, Mm -hmm. The problem that people are running into, though, is that when they tap on an icon, because I don't think that Apple envisioned this as, as a thing that people would be doing, and that's often what happens. People create things and then they go out into the world and uh, they are either picked up and turned into new things or they are kind of cast aside. Um, and in this case, it was sort of picked up and people realized that when you tap on an icon, then it launches the Shortcuts app, which then launches the app that you're after. And so this morning, my partner was asking me, is there a way to, to fix that? And I saw some people on Twitter talking about, I just wish that Shortcuts wouldn't launch first before it launched the app. Um, so I guess my first question for you, Matthew, is have you got, because certainly we've both done widgets and both have widgets and things like that. But mm-hmm. have you got as far as to make a PlayStation um, or one of my favorite ones was a, a, a lickable version of iOS um, that was, you know, sort of back to the skeuomorphic era uh, mm-hmm. of the home the old school. Yeah. So have you done any of the icon customization and do you have to have shortcuts launch before you can get to an app? You would know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you do have to have it launch every time. No, and this was and <laughs> this was also a thing that I was tweeting this morning that I really wish I had made a video on this subject last year because I had every one of my like 800 shortcuts at the time on my home screen as the custom icons. And wow. um, I guess maybe I'll have to choose a new pick of the week. But even Federico Vitici launched a whole app icon pack for shortcuts that you could do that you could add and add your shortcuts to the home screen. I was saying to someone else, Apple almost discouraged this in iOS 14 because they added the shortcuts app, the widget for the shortcuts app, which enabled you to run multiple shortcuts and things from the shortcuts app from the home screen without opening the shortcuts app, which is what most users wanted but they didn't necessarily account for that theming thing. They wanted people to use the widget. And so, ironically, they kind of maybe like missed this boat. And this has been available since the days of workflow. Um, somebody was also asking me, like, how did this even happen? Like, this is not something that Apple normally would do because customizing your home screen is, like you said, it's barely even functional the way that people would want it right now. Um And I think it's actually a happy accident because it basically came from the days of workflow where the team wanted a way for people to add these to their home screen and run them just like apps by opening workflow and running it. It would make sense if in that situation. Um, And the whole technical way is just like any website, if you go to Safari and tap share and then add to home screen, it will take that a fave icon for the website and put it on the home screen as the icon. So the workflow team realized we're generating these temporary web pages for people to add the workflows to their home screen. We can just give them our own icons. And so they added in the custom icon ability. And then I think another part was once the workflow was purchased by Apple, they didn't take away as much as they could any features that people were already using. And that was something that was already popular with users. So I remember seeing at the time there was definitely users right away and probably the same type of people. A lot of BTS fans from Asia were customizing their theme, their whole phone with basically their favorite pop stars and things like that. And I think it's been going on. But then the culmination of it was with uh, actually lucky for the developer, an app called Widget Smith. And I, I'm not sure if the original origin was this TikToker, but... There was a couple of TikToks last week where it was young girls theming their entire phones saying like, my <laughs> my phone is aesthetic AF, which is the joke that's now going around um, <laughs> of just being able to have these complete themes where what you actually end up doing is creating a background for the icon that matches your home screen background. So it basically just looks like there's custom icons without the normal app icon shape but they're really hidden behind there. And it's 
And then it does open shortcuts every single time, which to me, having 800 shortcuts on there at once was too much. I kind of was like, this isn't great. And when Apple didn't update it, I kind of took that as a sign of they're not going to support this very well. But I will say the community is strong and I think Apple should enable these to run from the home screen. It's clearly the most popular trend right now. I think it's exactly I'm excited because it's putting shortcuts on the map in a way that Apple still hasn't even really talked about. I've I can't remember how many times I've complained about it on here, probably at least <laughs> once, but um, they really haven't been doing a whole lot with it. And so this is now suddenly if people who aren't necessarily tapped into the tech world are asking you about it, that is like this is past <laughs> what we all thought it would be. And I'm also like it's great to see um, David Smith, the developer of Widget Smith, who makes mm-hmm. it's that it's one of those widgets that people are using to customize like the date and have your own exact style on there. I'm pretty sure he's <laughs> he said I'm number one on the App Store right now, and right he's now, been a long time developer who is also one of the nicest people in the world. So it's very awesome to see him get his day, basically. So that's very cool. Yeah, he's he is so uh, so talented and so kind, and I was pumped because again, the you know up to this point, you think of these apps as kind of they're they're for nerds, like by nerds for nerds is what <laughs> you would think. And so I was genuinely surprised when I launched uh, Twitter and saw Widget Smith on some desk on some some home screens of folks that you know I would not normally see that there. Um, and as I mentioned, my partner this morning, I was talking to him and he said, uh, I, or he said, I have a question for you. And I said, okay, I've got a meeting, so you got to make it quick. And then he started to turn his phone toward me and I could see uh, Carrie Fisher in an icon <laughs> on his uh, on his home screen. And I thought, I know exactly where this is going because he's That's a huge awesome. Carrie Fisher fan. Um, and... I, you know, he started to ask me about customizing, you know, apps and, and he showed me all the photos that he had downloaded of different, uh, television characters and stuff like that. And some different plans that he had. And he was asking, does it have to launch shortcuts in between? And I kind of had the conversation that you and I had where I was saying, Apple has two ways that they could go with this. They can either embrace it and say, okay, you know, we've got influencers now who are out there customizing Mm -hmm. home screens and showing people how to do it. And uh, there's a huge market here potentially and a huge uh, incentive, or they can sort of you know, tighten their, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Tighten their bow ties and their, uh, bonnets, I guess, <laughs> tighten their bow ties and bonnets, which is a new thing that I'm making up, uh, and sort of say, well, our aesthetic is more important than your <laughs> desire to customize your home screen. And therefore we will continue to make it like it is now in the hopes that people don't customize things too much and you know they should make that in the keynote video they should make that joke oh man that would be so <laughs> yes, good <laughs> tighten your bow ties and bonnets um up to this point i was in the mind that the bow ties and bonnets would win out but as i'm seeing more and more people talk about it and share it and make videos and all these kinds of things um and people are sharing their home screens. Think about the share your mm-hmm. Apple Watch home screen feature, share yeah. your Apple Watch face feature, share a home screen feature that comes to iOS 15 or 14.5 or something like that. Uh, that could be huge. And the, so I was just going to say, so I think that this would be a very good thing for them to embrace it. I agree. I think it's the community. I think it, it the what the community is doing is super important because they the same sort of thing happened last year where we had the automations and a lot of people were complaining that the time automations weren't actually automatic and so it made them not as useful. And Apple did change that. And I think they should do the same thing with this because it is really important. I would say also I I do think the conception that shortcuts is for geeks is something that geeks have said, but not necessarily other people who are using it. Like it's been, there are a lot of regular people who are using shortcuts because it's been built into the ecosystem for two years now. I do, I would say the deeper scripting stuff 
is probably more still inaccessible, but there's still a lot that you can do with shortcuts without ever having to use variables and things like that. So I think that's one thing that even I wish I had shared more because there's a lot of just simple opportunities that can make your phone work for you, which is really fun. And like, yeah, again, I might go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say in that way, it might be more accurate to say that, uh, geeks are knowingly using shortcuts more often yeah. than well, like those I'm who are not API because, requests. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I agree with you that, that, you know, because of the way that it's built in and frankly, some of the stuff that you just do on your phone could technically count as Siri shortcuts. Um, then yeah, there are a lot of people who are using it, but don't necessarily realize it. And I think that this is the cult. I mean, cause up to this point, there's not sort of a, a pop cultural uh, application that makes it so clear and present as to why someone would want to, would want to use this. Uh, because think about, you know, a- Apple, the way that we appreciate the design lock-in and the way that, you know, things are set up and yeah. don't mind that it's that way. But people crave as much as, you know, there's a a certain level of um, conforming that takes place. People do crave individuality and customization and uniqueness. And so to find that on an iOS device in a place where you used to not be able to express yourself so much in that way, I think is uh, really something that could be a driver. Because for me, I agree. I have a black background behind my home pay, my home screen because for me that makes the most sense. It's the most practical. It means that the icons aren't like, you know, sort of hard to see. I can read the labels yeah. just fine. And Same. there's no way in heaven, hell or uh, somewhere in between that I I'm going to make custom app icon stuff oh, on so my home it. screen. It's You're it's not. Do it, I swear. I I no. I am not. It is not my aesthetic. Um, you, you know what? <laughs> well, if they You're probably it, though, right. Write not? this down. Eleven twenty three a.m. Uh, Pacific time, Monday, September 21st, 2020, Micah Sargent said he wasn't going to make custom app icons for his <laughs> apps, and if he ever does it, then you can make him eat claim chowder. Is that what that means? I think that's what that means. That's what claim chowder is for, perhaps. I don't know. As long as it doesn't have wheat or gluten in it, then yes, he will eat his claim chowder. Gluten-free claim chowder. (laughs) I'd say uh, along that, I'm I'm just excited to see regular people like this will just open the door to what shortcuts can do and all the stuff that's on top. Um, A really good analogy was uh, Greg Barbosa posted a tweet that is like, this is the new MySpace. And I think that I realized later that that was actually very accurate because the thing that MySpace did was not just let you customize how to do your stuff, but it lets you learn how to code. And I think that's what shortcuts can do and teach people about programming, about scripting in a way where they'll never actually need to learn to code. They will program, but you're not going to be typing in curly braces and all that stuff. So it's cool. This is like, this random trend is what could bring the power of programming to the masses and things like that, which is incredibly powerful. Like it's hard to wrap my head around or be accurate about, but how much impact it could have. But this is a very empowering tool. Like this is why I do my thing is because of this tool. And so I'm excited to see it in millions and millions of people's hands. I mean, it already was in their hands, but now they're actually, now they realize they have the app even installed at all because there's yeah. that's another thing. People are searching Twitter for short or the app store for shortcuts and they already have it on their iPhones. <laughs> the guy who makes push cuts is doing very well too because he's at the top of search results there. So, so it's a, been a wild week, but even that we have more, there's more Apple news too. Yeah. Yeah. We should definitely move on. Um, aesthetics share your home screens with us if you want to uh i'd love to see what everybody's working on um up first 
I think this is something that a lot of people have been waiting for uh, for for iOS uh, or excuse me for tvOS. So tvOS 14 has launched, and with that comes uh, some some better options, better features, uh, particularly when it comes to cameras. Um, I, I remember getting questions from our listeners about how to view cameras on their uh, Apple TV while they were doing different things and this is a feature that exists in iOS 14 or excuse me tvOS 14 there's not a home app which is kind of annoying there are some home kit enabled apps on the tvOS app store uh, but there's not a home app regardless of that though you can get notifications for doorbell rings uh, if you've got a home kit enabled doorbell and you can see cameras in the home app as or excuse me in on the TV as well uh, by using that side view that pops up so in in iOS I keep saying iOS in tvOS 14 <laughs> there's this new sidebar that you get where you can change between uh, different users of the Apple TV and it also includes the ability to uh, trigger certain scenes and cameras, view certain cameras within uh, HomeKit. So that's great. Another thing that I didn't even realize was not possible until now is 4K on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. I guess Google and Apple, according to this 95 Mac article, Google and Apple kind of disagreed over video codecs for 4K. And so because of that, the Apple TV was not able to play 4K YouTube videos because it could not read uh, Google's 4K video codec. As of uh, tvOS 14, the VP9 video codec, uh, which apparently is what Google uses on YouTube, um, is something that is understood by the Apple TV now. So now you can watch 4K YouTube videos, uh, youtube.com slash Rene Ritchie, youtube.com slash, is it Matthew Casanelli or Matt Casanelli? Yeah. Matthew Casanelli. <laughs> Matthew Casanelli. Thanks. Do, do you shoot in 4K? Uh, I record in 4K, but I release in 1080p because I okay. zoom in and things like that. So gotcha. I don't think this is fully rolled out yet. Like I think YouTube is dragging their feet a little bit, but it's worth knowing that this is going to be available in the future and going forward, which is good because it's the Apple TV 4K and they didn't even have it in 4K. One other small detail about tvOS also is audio sharing, which is great. I use this um, with AirPods with my girlfriend a lot this summer. And it, a major thing for us was during um, August when we pretty much had to be inside for the entire month and have our air purifier going and fans all the time, we would use our AirPods with noise cancellation to watch movies together. Because otherwise it, we had to have the volume like excessively loud just to be able to hear small details and stuff like that. So it was pretty interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next topic here. Cool. Uh, so this one is something that folks are definitely going to want to check out if they have an Apple Watch. Uh, and that is automatic hand washing detection. So this is a feature that I have been using for a while, absolutely, uh, as a uh, beta user, but it is now available to everybody. And essentially what it does <laughs> is when you wash your hands, it listens to, uh, it's listening for the sound of water running. It is feeling for th what it believes to be hand washing movements. And it is listening for the quote squish unquote of soap. And all of those things uh, come together to provide a timer so that you properly scrub your hands for 20 seconds before you wash away all those germy wormies. Um, it is a feature that I have had mostly success with. There are some times where it gets triggered when I am not actually washing my hands, but those have gotten fewer and farer between. Um, so I, I've been really impressed with it. And it does make me, um, even sometimes there have been times where I will have washed or, you know, scrubbed my hands and I'm almost to the end. I go ahead and rinse my hands off and then it triggers and I will go ahead and keep scrubbing and going through just because 
I, it's this thing where it's like, I don't want my watch to judge me if I haven't mm. fully washed my hands. Cause it'll say, keep going, you know? Uh, and then it'll kind of give you some information about like, if you scrub your hands for 20 seconds, this is why this is good. And so I'm like, you know what? I don't want my watch giving me side eye. I got to keep doing it. So it has me washing my hands even more than 20 seconds, mm. uh, to make sure that I get that in. And so, yeah, let me see. Um, one of the fun things that you can do once you use this is in the health app, you can see uh, your average hand washing time. That's what I was uh, going to ask. Mine is 22 seconds on average. This is um, where you tell me yours. Mine is not. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he's going to say. It, mine is not. But it is in the last week because I was like, oh, God. <laughs> um, I basically made... The health app, if you use it, it will donate little shortcuts that you can then open back to those sections. And I think you had the toothbrushing one, which didn't get added in iOS 14, by the way. It's uh, right. shame. It's, it's, um, it's annoying. <laughs> but basically, I made one that opened back to the screen for that exact reason. is because as soon as I noticed, I was like, wow, okay. I mean, it does do, does have false triggers a decent amount. Even like, there's like random random things where it will go off but i still think it's worth it i've found the awareness is helpful and i kind of just like had worse habits i mean i was looking at all my health data and i do think i had better habits than the first four months of quarantine and then slightly worse habits in the in the last couple months so that's kind of a trend i think but working on it again so <laughs> I saw somebody else post their stats and I was like, oh God, his was like 30 seconds on average. And it's like, you got to be a doctor or something at that point. Um, yeah, 30 seconds <laughs> is probably what we should all be doing. Uh, if you tap on week or month, it'll tell you the total of washes that you've had within the week and month. Um, oh, that's yeah, also that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Uh, I average, if I go to, if you go to year, it'll tell you your daily average. I average 22 washes per day. Mm. I think that's also Mine's good 20. information for how much, uh, restroom use you have in a, in a given day. Yeah. Although that you should account for the current month is not over as well. So that's messed uh, me up. a couple times when I was looking at my stats, I was like, wow, that's really bad. And it's like, oh, just kidding. Obviously, if it's a total, <laughs> you need to think of that. But yeah, uh, and, that, and, that's and definitely a, a cool feature. Um, a quick mention is that uh, watchOS, or is, the, is that the Mac story, oh my goodness. A quick mention is that Mac stories has released a uh, watchOS 7 review Um Mac Stories does these fantastic reviews every year for iOS uh, as a whole. And now we've got uh, the watchOS 7 review as well. And so if you ever are in need of understanding, you know, Apple has some, some user manuals and some quick start guides and things like that. But it doesn't even begin to get into the depth that these reviews get into. You might think that a review is kind of like a, you know, a product review or an app review where you say, here's what I like about this. Here's what I don't like about this. But this is almost a, a guide to understanding and getting everything you could possibly want out of an operating system. And that's what makes these reviews so incredibly helpful and fascinating and fun uh, for those of you who really like to dive into the details because that's what they do. And it's, it's, I, I don't even know how, I mean, Apple should hire Mac stories <laughs> to write the user manuals for uh, the different operating systems because there's just so much here. So you can truly understand all the little tiddly, tiddly bits of your uh, watch OS by checking out this review and I don't know how many times I've gone into a Mac Stories review and found out, even though I've been using the developer preview and I do this stuff for a living, I will read the Mac Stories review and then, oh, I can do that? Wait, I can, I can do that? And i that's what I love the most about, uh, about these reviews is just learning even more that I can do with an operating system than I would otherwise. Uh, and I think that's what's great about them. Yeah, I definitely agree. The stuff from Mac Stories... It's fantastic. And I do believe Federico is still working on his major iOS 14 review because Apple 
<laughs> Apple dropped iOS 14 the day after they announced it. So that fit me also. But they've got watchOS 7 up right now. And it's worth looking into, especially because Apple did wa- launch the Apple Watch Series 6 last week. And so they have the new blood oxygen sensor and things like that that people are going to be testing out. Um, another thing, too, is the VO2 max stats are available in the health app if you already have the Apple Watch as well. But there's so much cool stuff. There's new watch faces. Um, you can use shortcuts to change those watch faces on time automations. Like Those are really powerful things that you can do. Um, the cycling directions and maps and stuff like that is great too. So definitely check it out. Um, Mac Stories Watch OS 7 Review. All righty, folks. So let's take a quick break before we come back for more. I want to tell you about Raycon. Uh, who are bringing you this episode of Smart Tech Today. When listening to podcasts and music I love, the best way and one of the easiest ways is with a pair of premium wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon's newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are Raycon's best ones yet. You get six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass and a more compact design, and a noise-isolating fit. Raycon earbuds are stylish and discreet. You don't have to worry about dangling wires or stems. And in fact, the company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Mike Tyson, Rich the Kid, Snoop Dogg are obsessed with Raycon's products. You can give them a try. Raycon has a 45-day free return policy, so you can make sure they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you. One of the things that I love about Raycon's is You know, normally you order a pair of earbuds and you get sort of uh, three different sizes, small, medium, large uh, of the the sort of ear tips, the things that go into your ears. Raycon wants you to have the perfect fit because of how they are shaped and where they go. They just plug into your ear and there's nothing dangling down. Uh, So they ship even more ear tips in the box to make sure that you get the fit that's perfect for you and your ear individually. I think that's fantastic. It means I don't have to order extra ear ear tips to try and figure out what size works for me. And, you know, sometimes uh, throughout the day, the the depending on the temperature and the humidity and things like that, your skin kind of changes shape. And therefore, your ear canal, at least on the, the part that's on the outside, is going to shift subtly and slightly. And so you may find that you want to shift to a different kind of tip. And there are so many different options that this makes it very easy to do. Uh, for a limited time, you can get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash STT. That's buyraycon.com slash STT for a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. That's buyraycon.com slash STT. Thanks so much to Raycon for sponsoring Smart Tech Today. So Google has a new feature out uh, for iOS um, in the Google app, which will let you uh, essentially hear an article read out loud when you you tap to have that done. And uh, I think I do some of my best thinking in the car. And sometimes, you know, a concept will come to mind, but I don't necessarily know what I need to know about it. And I'll be thinking, oh, man, I wish I knew more about this. And while you're driving, it's not a great idea to obviously be looking at your phone and reading articles on your phone. Uh, So I love the idea of, you know, I'm driving or maybe I'm in the shower too is another place. And you have this thought. And then with this, you could actually have the article read aloud to you um, while you're doing other things. So... Anyone, Google has this tweet. Now anyone who wants a little help reading text on their phone can listen to web pages out loud on the Google app on iOS. Just tap the speaker icon to listen now or add the story to your queue. And I think this is, um, yeah, I think this is good. And of course, uh, Matthew, as you know, this is something that Siri can do as well. Um, mm-hmm. But if you are a heavy Google user and you are used to using the Google app for iOS, then having this feature in there is, is handy. I agree. Especially, I think the big thing is the queue that that's a unique thing that you could queue up a series of articles and then go on your drive and listen to all of them. I love this. I I have a shortcut, of course, (laughs) I'm going to say that so many times, but (laughs) I have a shortcut that I use to listen to my own blog posts because 
part of the struggle that I have a lot of times is the transition between writing and editing. And so I will just mm-hmm. listen out loud and it's actually really hard sometimes not to just immediately be like, Oh God, I need to edit all of it. But hearing the whole thing and hearing how the robot translates your sentence structure can be revealing and also just kind of like interesting. So I definitely recommend it. Uh, and then the Google Assistant uh, got an update. Is that correct, Matthew? Uh, yes. Sorry. Just dropped my microphone. <laughs> um, this one is just a quick, simple thing that is one of those things again. And I was like, didn't it already, shouldn't have already done this? But I ran into this myself. It's a simple feature where if you have an alarm going off somewhere in the house, you can talk to one of your other smart speakers to turn it off. So the main thing is, I was using the Google Assistant that I have in the kitchen and then I was upstairs and I was shouting and the other Google Assistant was interrupting saying there's nothing playing on it. And it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I have to run downstairs just to use the voice thing. Kind of defeats the purpose. But now they're basically smart enough that you can say, hey, stop in the kitchen instead and it'll do it. So I just like to keep up on random little features that Google Assistant is adding because those things over time are what makes it the experience great and maybe hard to find and round up. So good to know. Yeah. Uh, up next, so there was a feature that, or a, a feature, a, an offering that was at one point called Free Time uh, and, and Free Time Unlimited, which was essentially a service, uh, uh, an offering for for kids. And Amazon has updated that to kind of make it more clear what it is by calling it uh, Amazon Kids Plus and Amazon Everything's Kids. Plus. So. Yeah, you got to have a plus in something this year or else you're not doing it right. Subscribe to Micah Plus, the new feature from Micah Sun. Uh, I should have done that. Dang it. Oh, I remember Chihuahua Coffee Plus. Hmm. <laughs> got a lot to think about. Anywho, uh, this is going to give folks the ability to uh, – get, it, it provides like a, a kid's experience. So you have on your – you know, the, the Echo Show devices, um, the home screen is a little bit different for Amazon kids and the Amazon Echo integrations are specific to kids. And it also means that you get some music and video content that is also aimed at kids. Uh, there's – 20,000 books, movies, audiobooks, games, and Spanish language content available. Uh, and it looks like it's $2.99 per month for a single child or $6.99 per month for a family uh, if you are already an Amazon Prime subscriber. And then $4.99 per month and $9.99 per month if you are not a Prime subscriber. So uh, this is a little bit different in that it's going to uh, it'll it'll work on you know Amazon's own Fire tablets on the Amazon Fire TV on Kindle on Echo, uh, but also iOS Android uh, devices as well, and that way um, you can you can get all of that information, all of those different uh, offerings through this. So, yeah, I think that it's just a a, a way to update and kind of bring into uh, cohesion, all of Amazon's offerings that are aimed toward kids, uh, ages six to 12. Yeah. And I can see this being especially important just now that people are home all the time and probably using tablets, maybe giving it to get a tablet to keep them entertained because you have to work (laughs) all day long also. Like, I mean, obviously school and things like that, but just there's a lot to going on right now and having this service, I think be properly branded saying (laughs) uh, Amazon free time unlimited is let me give my kids unlimited free time doesn't exactly resonate with parents. So I think the kids and then the interesting like the kids plus part does seem to be for once you're eight years old or, or there's a new profile that they're basically saying is kind of a step, a step up into having a full fledged adult tablet kind of thing. And There's new features too, like um, you can use the announce thing to broadcast through your echoes and stuff like that. But they do say that does require processing the information, so it requires consent and everything. So at least it's it's good to have these kids' services locked down and 
good prices and good features and stuff nowadays, especially it makes a lot of sense. They've all, we've all like a common theme with this is just having your devices work together and logically for 2020. Whereas it's not uncommon to have tons of smart gear that all does need to work together, not just independently. So another good feature there. Uh, another feature that Amazon has added, and I think this is a really interesting one for sure, is um, they've partnered with AT and T that lets, in, in a way that lets you use your Echo devices as a phone. So up to this point, Amazon, of course, has its own has had its own Alexa calling feature, uh, and that's that started in 2017. And you would essentially use just the Echo by itself as a way to call. Uh, numbers for free. Um, then they added the ability to use Skype as a way to place calls with people. And now they've partnered with at and in a way that basically, in the same way that the Apple Watch can be used as a an extension of your iPhone. So if I were to call someone on my Apple Watch while I was out and about without my iPhone, it would still show up as my phone number that I use on my uh, device itself. This kind of works in that way where I use my Echo to place a call, but it shows up as my number that I choose. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually went into... So you, you launched the ALEXA app on your phone um, and then you you go to the bottom, there's a a more button. So I tap that more button. I tap settings. I scroll down to ALEXA preferences. I tap communication. And then there are different accounts that you can add. One is AT&T. So I can hit the plus sign next to AT&T. I choose sign in. And then it takes me to an AT&T landing page where I uh, sign into my AT&T account. Um, and then I've run into an issue because it's saying that my username and password are not what they are, which is not accurate because <laughs> I use a password manager. So I think that there's a, a bit of an issue here. But um, I am going to try and get this set up just to, to give it a go. And we should be clear, too, that this feature has existed in other countries. So uh, in the UK and Germany and uh, in the European Union, folks have been able to... Uh, use this with certain mobile phone accounts on Vodafone. Um, So this feature has been around for a while, but kind of just coming to the United States by way of AT&T. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some more integrations. Um, Yeah, I, I... I don't place phone calls, really. I don't like to talk on the phone. Uh, But the big reason for that is because I don't I feel very trapped having something pressed up against my face um, or even using um, earbuds. I feel kind of trapped in a phone call. So the thought of having an echo that kind of sits in the room and being able to move around and do what I need while I talk on the phone is actually kind of appealing to me. So that's why I'm planning on setting up this integration because I think it would make me feel less like I need to gnaw my leg off because I got caught in a bear trap. Um, Yeah. So yeah, I think this is this is neat, and uh, I, I think the one concern is going to be the privacy implications. Um, you know, uh, what happens whenever someone else in your home calls from your number to somebody and uses that information? Uh, that is certainly mm-hmm. an issue. So something to keep in mind. You know, don't set this up if you have uh, untrustworthy roommates or something like that. Um, I think the worst that I would have in my situation is Henry or Mizzy would call Amazon and ask for more dog treats. So, uh, not, not too big of a, not too big of a concern. Yeah. I, What's next? I've made a few calls from my home pod, but it, it's, it's always, it's one of those things where every single conversation is going to start with, can you hear me on this thing? So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's exactly. going to be a couple of years before it becomes normal for most people, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what's the next other for us? news Yes, is Sam Jackson or Samuel L. Jackson, as everybody likes to call him, um, for the Echo is and the voice assistant service that you can use to replace him in is now being updated with even more phrases and roasts and stories. So, of course, but the I think an interesting thing is that there's adding Hey Samuel as the um, trigger phrase. So hopefully you don't already have that set up because it might have triggered your thing. But it is interesting. They're saying it's the first voice or first celebrity wake word. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah. But if you 
once again, do not run this around children. <laughs> oh my there is Lord. a feature to turn off the swear words, but he definitely will say something back to you. So <laughs> always fun. Huh. Um, and then last but not least is that just kind of, I mean, we were just talking about sharing and customization earlier. Um, now you can share your ALA, A-L-E-X-A routines uh, with other folks. So think of... ALEXA routines as a little bit like shortcuts. It is uh, sort of a multi-step process that you can set up uh, for your Amazon devices. So I could say, ALEXA, I'm leaving the house. And then ALEXA would turn off the lights in my home and start playing classical music and uh, turn on the tower fan, for example, and then I would leave. This would let you excuse me, this would let you share those routines with other folks. Um, so I think that's handy because that's one of my favorite things. I see different uh, shortcuts that people have created and I'm going, oh, can can I get a link to that? Can I, uh, I, mm-hmm. I don't want to say something for myself. Can, yeah, yeah, in no. fact, I'm still waiting on that one. Um, so this would be nice too. And again, it, it it shows people the power of these routines without them necessarily having to go in, if they don't have that inspiration yet to go in and create it. And in some cases, I think it inspires them to then want to go in and create it for themselves or create other ones like, oh, I can do this. Does that mean I can do that or I can do that? And that's kind of how Mm -hmm. I got into it in the first place was, wait, if they can do that, then I could probably do this. And then suddenly, you know, you're you're playing around with it and learning more about it. So I think that shareable feature is is a big deal for sure. Yeah. It's great. It's hilarious in the article. She literally says, the author says, this would be great if there was online repositories like those created for iOS shortcuts, which is awesome. So I'm not going to lie. I saw this and I have a website where I publish automations and this is on my roadmap. I'm going to be sharing my Echo routines, I'll say, eventually. So it's not just shortcuts. Uh, All right, let's take a quick break before we come back with our uh, projects for this week. So uh, this episode of Smart Tech Today, I'm excited to say, is brought to you by that green fox. It's Mint Mobile. Breaking up with your old wireless provider just got a whole lot easier thanks to Mint Mobile. They were the first company to sell premium wireless service online only. And now, this is really exciting. Mint Mobile is introducing its unlimited data plan for just 30 bucks a month. Let me just let's just take let's just take a moment there. Just just think about that. 30 bucks a month, unlimited data. All right? Are you thinking about that? Are you looking at your bill from your wireless carrier right now where you have unlimited data? And then you look at the price and it's a lot more than 30 bucks. Yeah, that's right. Mint Mobile will give you unlimited data for 30 bucks a month. That is awesome. I don't know how much your soon to be X wireless provider is charging you, but I have a feeling it's a lot more than that. I think Mint Mobile is fantastic. Uh, the fact that you can get that unlimited unlimited data for 30 bucks a month. I have a uh, Mint Mobile SIM stuck into my iPad and that means I can use it wherever I go, whenever I want to, and with service that works in incredibly well here in Northern California. For people who hate their phone bill and are ready to cut ties with big wireless, Mint Mobile offers premium unlimited service. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you, including Ryan Reynolds. Thank you, Ryan Reynolds. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Yes, that's T-Mobile. And you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep that same phone number and, of course, your existing contacts. Uh, If you're not 100% satisfied with the unlimited plan, well, Mint Mobile has you covered with its seven-day money-back guarantee. Break up with big wireless and switch to Mint Mobile's premium unlimited data plan for just 30 bucks a month. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 30 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com STT. That's mintmobile.com STT. Please head there to check out the unlimited data plan. Cut your unlimited wireless bill to 30 bucks a month at mintmobile.com STT. 
Thank you so much, Mint Mobile, for sponsoring this week's episode of Smart Tech Today and for saving everybody so much stinking money. Un- I can't, 30 bucks and you get unlimited data. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. You got to check it out. Oh, I love it. I love you, Mint Mobile. All right. Matthew, you are wanting to smartify. Can you tell me more about that? Yes. I am looking to make some sort of investment in the smart tech scene because I've been slightly holding off while I was busier on some of my shortcut stuff. And I'm just, I'm having trouble deciding what, you know, there's so much out there and there's tons of stuff and I want some of your tips because I've got some ideas, but I'm not totally sure. It's always, (laughs) this is one of those interesting things is, Almost by doing this show, I've talked about more and more things than I could ever actually use, as opposed to a lot of people have trouble finding the thing that they want to use. But I think, I mean, I've written down like I want to get, hold on a second, I got, I want to get more motion sensors. Mm -hmm. I think I want more lights because I've got hue lights, but I think it's kind of a base level thing that I want to experiment more with some of the variety that's out there. And then the whole indoor camera, outdoor camera security system game is kind of all tied together because a lot of those you can buy individual ones or you can get the whole, if you do get the security system, it might be worth investing in just one company. Um, and then also just some fun stuff like I'm I'm just going to say it myself that I'm probably going to get the Lametric clock just for fun because that's a a nice thing to keep around. And then also some outlets and things like that. Like we sort of have that. I want to have a sort of blank slate because we're not, not with my stuff, but just for what we're looking through today because there's, there's so much variety and you are like my expert, my personal expert. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. So, I I think we have a Lometric clock at um, at Twit, and mm-hmm. it's funny because it'll be in the background, and then people will complain that it's uh, distracting. So, uh, mm-hmm. I think we ended up kind of taking it out of the uh, out of the background. I'm not 100 percent on that. We might still have it back there, but I know some people have uh, complained about it for sure. That's a it's a very cool device, though. I just got. And I haven't even used it yet. I haven't even set it up. Let me see if it's around here. Um, one sec. Like I quite literally have not turned this on yet. Um, my partner was joking that I needed to get a an on-air sign for my office. And I went online and on-air signs are very expensive. You know, the ones that are made with <laughs> yeah. neon. Um and so I was looking for a different option and I came across, oh, I think it maybe it just turns on like that. Um, no, I don't think that worked. I came across a product uh, by a company, ooh, there's quite the glare, by a company called Divoom or uh, D-I-V-O-O-M. And they make this thing called the Pixu uh, and it is ooh. a square of LED lights and uh, it's a Bluetooth connected and it's it charges over USB and you use those two or you use your iPhone with an app um, to actually connect to it and adjust uh, what shows up on the screen. Um, they kind of market it as multiple things. So along with um, with being a uh, uh, you know, a, a, a smart display, it can also uh, actually be just a light um, so that that way you can set it up with here. I'm trying to set this up at the same time. Um, and now it's, it wants to do a device upgrade, of course. Um, so let me let it do that. But you can see that it just synced to the proper time as well. And it's doing a firmware upgrade. But basically uh, with these squares, it is, uh, oh, and look, it's downloading a firmware update now. <laughs> you can adjust those to whatever color you want. Golly, that glare is really bad. And you can um, edit them however you want to. But then you could also just light these all up as, you know, a, a, 
5000K brightness or something like that and just use it as a light display. Uh, so mm. essentially, oh, and then you can connect it to your Twitter account, your Facebook account, all that kind of stuff, and then it could give you notifications. So, oh, and another thing that's kind of cool about it is that you can pair up to four of them together so you could make, you know, oh, wow. a big display on your wall with all four. Um, I think it was about 50 bucks, which is inexpensive in comparison yeah. to some of the other LED displays that are out there. Um, the the Lumetric, which I don't think is LED, is it? Isn't it actual um, physical? Does it light so. up or is it physical? Like individual lights. Yeah, that one is uh, 199 And I imagine that it's higher quality. Um, from what I've seen of the one at Twit, it's pretty high quality. And this is, as you could see, you know, the, the screen, you can't look at it directly with lights because it has a really bad glare. Um, and yeah. I'm not sure what the current brightness value of this is because, again, it's installing a firmware update. So I don't know how much brighter it gets. Um, but for 50 bucks, I fun. was really impressed with what you could get out of it, especially the fact that I don't have to keep it plugged in. So that was kind of the thing is like, I need something that I could hang on the other side of the door or upstairs somewhere that kind of shows, yeah, I'm on air right now. And then to the fact that it has all these integrations is, is kind of exciting. Um, but yeah, I think that that Lumetric thing is super cool. So that's I don't know. Let's see. Cool. Start, go ahead. I was just going to say that that's, I do think something that's like, I, I don't want to, spend too much i mean unless i'm investing in a home security thing so that's pretty cool like that's a good way to play around with it and do something interesting like i was totally imagining i could have little glyphs for the shortcut that i'm working on showing in the background or something but who knows about the lighting part but <laughs> some of that fun stuff is is super cool also i guess as we continue to go through this if any users have or if any listeners have recommendations as well or things that you like definitely send us feedback uh which is stt oh, at stt twist at, dot tv yeah. yes uh so starting from <laughs> the, the top that always says that <laughs> um motion sensors i have always said and still will always say that the philips hue uh smart motion sensor is your best bet uh, for having a, a motion sensor in your home. If you have, I should be clear, if you have a, um, a Philips Hue bridge. And that is because it is a Wi-Fi connected smart motion sensor. It has... Other features built into it, including a light sensor, so it can measure lux values, and a uh, temperature sensor, so it works as that as well. So essentially, in one room, you get many of the room sensing qualities that you would want, but it's also incredibly responsive. It is the most responsive um, motion sensor that I have come across in my smart home search for motion sensors. Um, that's what makes it particularly fantastic. And it's super easy, super simple to set up. Um, it takes, I, th I think it takes a AAA battery or maybe two AAA batteries. I can't quite remember the batteries, but it lasts mm -hmm. forever with, uh, let's see, I can't see from here. Um, but w yeah, with the, with the battery life, um, yeah, two years, it says there, uh, it, it truly lasts that long. It really does. Um, and so if you have a Philips Hue uh, set up with a Philips Hue bridge, don't look anywhere else but the Philips Hue motion sensor. You just need to go for that one. Um, okay. I it, it just works so stinking well, especially in comparison to the Bluetooth LE motion sensors, which are no. Uh, yeah. they, I've got Eves, they which is well. slightly slow, but it um, it's just HomeKit only. So I'm trying to set that up with my routines that I might be sharing soon. That's definitely part of this is that I'm trying to go, I guess I should have mentioned that at the top too, not just home kit only stuff because I want to experiment across brands. Yeah, I think uh, the motion, uh, the temperature part, I remember you telling me that and I was like, oh yeah, that's really great. But oddly, they don't ship to California, it looks like. It says that on the Amazon product page. So I have no idea what's going on there. Um it's kind of weird, and it doesn't say it's in that st in stock until October 10th, and there are some new events coming out, so I might wait on this one because it, it almost sounds like there's going to be a new version or something like that. So, but that's definitely interesting. Um, I guess with the lights thing, 
I am interested in LifeX lights because of the color capabilities. And I also want to make sure that um, my overhead lights work for videos well because I want the light to cast at a specific color temperature. But then I'm also interested in filament style ones, which are the Edison bulbs that you can see the what is not actually a real coil because they're just LEDs now. But um, those are just kind of nice looks. And um, those are really good for video backgrounds because they kind of just like give off a nice glow that's very roomy. So I'm trying to decide, Have you? do you have any of those filament ones? No. Um, I, f- I find those things kind of gimmicky <laughs> uh, <laughs> in in the end. I I agree that, you know, it's... it's uh, a nice look. And like you said, it's a lower brightness level, but you can often achieve that brightness and warmth with the other bulbs still. And so it ends up being, you know, you're spending more money and mm-hmm. getting less light. And that's my big thing. AF. It, <laughs> oh, brother. Well, then, you know, for me, that's no, that doesn't work. Uh, because for me, I think I relate value to lumen output um, which will make some people scream, uh, but mm-hmm. that is that's kind of how I see it. I want to know that I have the ability to and the choice to output a lot of light because I can shift that down and dim it to less light and change the the color temperature to make it a warm, soft white with a, a little bit of a glow. And then if I want to, I can ramp it up to, you know, 800 lumens and blast the space with enough light for what feels good to me. And so that's kind of, I I don't, I personally, I don't recommend and I don't myself Mm -hmm. think that those filament bulbs are worth it unless you're an interior decorator who's, you know, setting up a space with, as you say, uh, something that's as aesthetic AF uh, as as you're looking. (laughs) Rather than, yeah, exactly. I think that's why I was saying, I want to get a combination of lighting and then like lights that just look nice also. Because I mean, it's a different vibe too. Like I specifically want the filament ones for the evening and for the orange glow and not for maximum brightness for visibility during the daytime or something. So I think it's if you're if you know what it's for, it could be worth it, but don't just try to like light your house with filament bulbs because you're going to be spending a lot of money and it's not going to be very bright. <laughs> I also, okay, maybe I just picked the worst time because LifeX's lights are also, they're doing a certified refurbished sale very publicly on the front page of their website and a lot of their stuff is out of stock. Um, so I wonder if they're also coming out with something new. Maybe I should contact them directly because that does seem, they've been doing new stuff and maybe with Hugh making their moves on um, the light, the light strip world, they're coming back at it. Lifex actually, I don't know if you ever saw this, but they were banned from Twitter for like four months. I think yeah. ever since that hack and they never were able to get reaccess to their account. And they even came out with a, we didn't mention this, but they have a new light that uses the, I think it's ultraviolet to kill bacteria. It's like using those light beams and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, we can promote our new product on Twitter because we were still banned for so long. So sorry to those guys. Jeez. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they got that wor- uh, worked out because, yeah, that was like that for a while. Um, now I was trying to get that uh, Pixu set up with a, an on-air thing just so I could show it real quick. But uh, it is... It's got a lot of settings, so it's kind of hard to see um, what it says. But yeah, it's uh, it nice on air. Um, but again, I would through. probably That's redo great. it. Ah, oh, there. I love <laughs> the it. That's awesome. I want the same type of thing. <laughs> yeah, you should. I'm like I said, uh, fifty bucks was I think well within the range, um, and. The the I think the thing that they are kind of going for with the app is uh, uh, it's a social media marketplace as well, where you can set it up. You can get different designs from different people. Um, apparently, there's uh, 
There's a feature where you can set up a chat room on your display so you can talk to people in the community Mm -hmm. and it pops up on the display. There are games you can play. You can put your planner on there. And I don't know how that would work personally, but apparently you can. And Matthew Casanelli, Siri Shortcuts. It works. Oh, they have shortcuts? Yep. Oh my it, god! It does. I, you yeah, just heard me like buy was... that in one second. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I need to uh, add a link to that thing. Yeah, now. lead with that. Uh, man. No. <laughs> I've talked so much about it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to add that. But let's see. Let's move on. Uh, so we've done motion sensors, new lights, indoor and outdoor cameras. You're looking in the right place. Uh, Eufy is really stepping their game up like hardcore with the, the devices that they have. Um, uh, Eufy security, I think is where they, they keep the light, uh, the, the cameras and there are outdoor cameras. There are indoor cameras. Uh, there's a sort of pan and tilt camera that I've talked about before. Um, I think that they are are absolutely killing it, crushing it uh, with these different lights. Or is that is it Eufy that does the pan and tilt camera? Um, yeah, the newest one. Wise? Is, yeah. Are you talking about Wise? Yeah. No, not Wise. Uh, it's definitely. I was either thinking it was Eufy or it was Anchor, but isn't Eufy Anchor anyway? Um, yes. Yeah, and they <laughs> even have a doorbell it. camera. I forgot about that. Uh, so with all of those different options available, I think we're almost there, Kevin. Um, I think it might be near the bottom. Pass the baby cameras. There it is on the left there. Indoor cam 2K pan and tilt. Um, I had talked about this on the show not too long ago. Uh, and I think we just talked about it last week because it was on sale. The Eufy is just crushing it. And so whether you're going indoor or outdoor, uh, I think you'll be happy. And in fact, um, Mac Power Users, uh, a podcast on Relay FM. Uh, recently had an episode of which I was a part and we talked about uh, HomeKit stuff. And uh, I think that it, it may have come up uh, a couple of times. We talked about Eufy's different devices uh, and the way that they work with HomeKit. So if you're curious about that, you should check out um, that recent episode of Mac Power Users to yeah, hear me talk about HomeKit and those cameras in particular. Nice. Yeah, I I have been eyeing Eufy stuff. That's why I linked it because that camera, it's like, I guess I'm trying to figure out is specifically for indoor cameras, there might be something else to go with it. And then the, I think the outdoor system looks pretty good. Looks like they have a Kickstarter too for a delivery drop box that you put on your backyard. Yeah, <laughs> pretty interesting. I saw that. But yeah, they are like the robot vacuum stuff too I've been interested in. So maybe I'll send them a message. <laughs> I would like to test that robot thing, but I don't know about investing in it right away. Um, right. Yeah, okay. That yeah, seems actually, pretty solid. That would be, you should do that. Maybe we could get somebody from Eufy on the show too with uh, that intro. Um, yeah, let's see. What's next on your list? Uh, security system. I'm going to have to pass on that for now. I... I have I'm trying the Eufy one and it's fine, um, mm. but I just don't I don't know I I suppose I don't see. Perhaps it's because I have not worked in retail and therefore have not seen the dark side of humanity, um, that I just don't have the concern that a security system sort of is meant to alleviate. Oh, I totally didn't. If that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah. don't you live on so, a second story even? No, I, I live like, on, uh, it, it's, it's a three story place. Um, like yeah. my, my space is first level, second level and third level. Um, mm-hmm. so it touches the ground. Like people could walk up to the door and break into it if they wanted to. I don't know. Um, I think I'm, I know I'm speaking from a place of privilege with that, but I just, because of my lack of concern there, I mean, I lock my doors and do all that stuff, but because of that, I don't know what makes a good security system, um, per se. And therefore in testing the ones that I've tested, I don't know if they are, are what's best. Um, yeah. but I will, all I can say is that given Yuffie's, uh, 
way of killing it when it comes to indoor and outdoor cameras. It's possible that their security system is just as great. But I know that the wire cutter recommends, um, is it Google's Nest security system right now? Uh, Mm -hmm. And then I know that Ring has come out with a new security system. But I have other reservations when it comes to Ring um, that keep me from ever wanting to... uh, support that system. Oh, in yeah. fact, uh, it looks like the wire cutter does recommend ring as the best no contract security system. So it's $180 from Amazon, uh, and you get five different pieces, uh, which include a contact sensor for your door, a motion sensor, an alarm in your home and the actual boop, boop, beep, beep button thingy. <laughs> uh, yeah. and then the runner up is, is simply safe. So, yeah, I don't that's know. Fair. I yeah, like I'm I think I'm more interested in the sort of like I don't care as much about the security code as the just monitoring from the outside and being able to see the front porch and the back porch like we've had packages stolen for sure. Um I mean, we had our car broken into a while ago, so that's definitely made us a little more conscious about that kind of thing, but also like I'm not I'm not crazy concerned about it. So that's why it's like, do I even need to go up to a security system? Like we might not always stay in this home too. So that's something that's like, I'm probably going to invest in a higher level system when I actually settle down a little bit more. Um, so something that's in between, I'll probably start with the UFI things and then maybe I'll relook at all the outdoor cameras because that seems interesting. Yeah. And Arlo then, yeah, is um, I think, bit. Otherwise, I have, I just remembered to the clocks. Um, I think I'm going to try out Logitech's new one because that looks pretty interesting. Just the smaller bedside thing. I really I need think to that's stop checking my phone echo, right when I wake up. <laughs> I, that's where I think the Echo Dot with clock is great. Um, uh, yeah. it's, it's small profile, it tells the time, and then you also get the benefits of all of the things that Echo can do. Um, but it doesn't have to. I think it's can you watch? I guess I don't know how many times I'm going to watch videos on it, but no, I'm, no, no. I'm it's just an LED interested. display. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I, yeah, I want to get it's a, it's a little a dot with an screen. LED display. Yeah. Well, cool. I think that should do it. I think I'm probably right. going to, even the one that you mentioned does something the best of the, the, especially if it's shortcuts supported. Oh man. That's yeah, $50 the out of my pocket one. right away. <laughs> right now it's on, you can get it for forty nine ninety, and you can save an extra 7% on top of that. Um, so yeah, definitely worth checking out and looks like, um, uh, they can deliver it pretty quick too. So, uh, yes, yeah, awesome. that's that. Now let's take a quick break and take a nap with Gasper, (laughs) who are bringing you this episode of Smart Tech Today. Listen, we've all heard of Casper. You know, the sleep company with outrageously comfortable products at not so outrageous prices. From award-winning mattresses to pillows and sheets and duvets, Casper transforms the way we sleep one snooze at a time. Casper has bedding, bed frames, and heck, they even got a dog bed. Casper has everything you need to build the bed of your dreams. Every Casper mattress is designed with a system to react and adapt to your body all night long. And inside, precisely 1,501 perforations create a cooling system so effective you won't be awake to notice. Only Casper mattresses are made with 86 supportive gel pods to align your spine and eliminate aches and pains. Altogether, It's the cooling, supportive comfort you need for the most refreshed feeling come morning. I love my Casper mattress. I talk about it all the time because of how much I love it. In fact, I've got Casper pillows, Casper sheets, Casper bed frame, Casper everything because I trusted this company with uh, my, my sleep in the first place by getting the mattress. And it was so right and so nice that I kept going back for more. And they have provided quality sleep products of all sorts. And it starts with the Casper mattress. Folks, you've got to give this a try. Uh, That's one of the things that's awesome about it is that you get a 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial uh, to make sure that this is the mattress for you. So 99 days come around and you decide, "Mm, not for me. I don't think you will, but if you do, no problem. You get that risk-free sleep-on-it trial. 
Plus, Casper offers free shipping and painless returns to the U.S. and Canada. Now, with 0% APR financing options, it's even easier to try a Casper mattress. In fact, that is how I bought my first Casper mattress, was using that 0% APR financing option. And it felt really nice to be able to spread that out over the course of, uh, over the, course of the purchase and now you know, owning that Casper mattress. So you out there, if you're looking for a better night's sleep, you just head to casper.com slash STT and use code STT for $100 off select mattresses. That's code STT for $100 off select mattresses. Terms and conditions apply. See casper.com slash terms. Thanks so much to Casper for sponsoring this week's episode of Smart Tech Today. All righty. That leaves us with our picks of the week. Matthew, why don't you tell me about yours? Uh, yes, I have got an aesthetic AF. <laughs> shortcuts icon pack for you all to download um the, uh, it's called the pixel brand from mac stories so uh, federico launched this earlier this year and there's a couple different packs you can get um classic shortcuts icons that they kind of recreated with their own style and then a colorful version plus um there's a whole set of OmniFocus icons if you happen to use that app but Pretty pretty nice. Um, Federico's got, let me see, I was going to say 400 versions or 400 icons in four different versions. So you get 1,600 icons. And there's a couple different packs, but the bundle one is, um, oh, hold on a second, is uh, $24.99. So, or, sorry, $29.98. And then if you get the OmniFocus ones, they're $18. So... This is a great way to support Mac Stories. They do awesome work and get your whole custom home screen set up. So I've had a couple of these on my iPad home screen for months and months. Um, I have a series of shortcuts that uses the set playback de destination or the handoff action to basically take whatever music or podcast is on the current device and send it to my HomePod or a Bluetooth speaker or AirPods or anything like that. And so I had a whole grid of those using little HomePod and AirPods that they created for their on my home screen. So yeah, I definitely recommend it. Cool. What about you? Yeah. I, now I've got my, my, uh, cursor hovering over the buy button. <laughs> um, I thought you weren't going to set those up, Micah. <laughs> not for that. that. Was this episode and you're already going to do it. Not for that. I'm not going to use it for that. It does. It's different if it's shortcuts. I just, what I was saying let me be clear is that I'm not going to take my apps, the normal apps that I have on my home screen, the, oh, the home app, uh, the clock, photos, messages, maps, Instagram, music, simple and settings and all the other ones and give them custom icons because they already have icons and I don't want to make them custom. More power to, to you make if you twit do. Versions. Where's the twit icon pack? Come on, guys. You got to jump on this. <laughs> Stop this. Stop this madness. No, I'm kidding. If, if you want to customize and, and have your own, I think that's fantastic. I love looking at them. I'm just saying for me, with my black wallpaper, uh, it's not something that I'm into. But let's move on. Are you looking for joy? Are you looking for happiness? Are you looking for fun and fancy free? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you won't look any further than the <clears throat> X-Power A2 Aero Pro Multi-Use Electric Computer Duster Dryer Air Pump Blower Black. Folks, wow. I love this thing. So let me first start by saying uh, <laughs> you, you want to clear off dust in your electronics or um, on your, your television or something like that, and, or in your keyboard, and you think, oh, I've got to go buy some canned air. Canned air is expensive. It's not great for the environment. It's not great for your own health. It doesn't last very long. It has that pesky problem of getting very cold very fast. It has all sorts of issues, um, except for its very important role in the culinary world, particularly in baking and cake decorating, where you as a baker slash cake decorator, feel free to use all the canned air you want, because I understand there's a very specific reason for it. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I think that it's kind of annoying and uh, it's, like I said, it's expensive. So it's time 
to kick that canned air to the side and just invest in the last uh, duster you're ever going to need. And that is the X-Power A2 Aero Pro Multi-Use Electric Computer <laughs> Duster Dryer Air Pump Blower Black. This is, this is amazing. Uh, $53, which is expensive, <laughs> one would think, except for the fact that you'll never have to buy any stinking uh, canned air again, so you'll save money. I'm going to show you. It comes with this uh, bag that you can keep the air blower, uh, excuse me, the X-Power A2 Aero Pro Multi-Use Electric Computer Duster Dryer Air Pump Blower Black In uh, that says X-Power on it. And it comes with a bunch of different attachments, including uh, this little attachment that you can use to actually fill stuff. So uh, if you if you have an air mattress that you've lost the, the uh, filler to, you could use that, um, you know, a... a a bouncy ball or a, a um, what are those called? Exercise ball. You can fill it. It comes with, um, this is to change from the normal size of the, the valve to a smaller size so that you can connect this tiny little duster brush. Um, oh, so that way you can too. send it across a keyboard. Uh. And then, <laughs> um, let's see what else. Brush is your mind, got brush your so webcam so off also. Brush out, brush your shoulders off with the webcam. Uh, this is another tool for the bigger size that's got a brush. And then one of these little wedge things so that you can kind of uh, direct air across a line. It has two settings. There's a one and a two switch. And really, you'll never need to use more than the one switch, but it does have that two switch if you want it. Let me just go ahead and give you a little bit of a uh, uh, showing you how, the, how well this thing works. This is the one. Oh my god. <laughs> He's doing the face. <laughs> my mouth is so dry. The here's the here's the two. Oh my god. We have to post this clip online. <laughs> so folks, hold on, I gotta get get some water after that. <laughs> so folks, I thought that I was going to get this thing and I was going to use it on my keyboard and on my desk. And then I was going to be happy that I didn't have to use uh, canned air anymore. But once I started using it and saw how powerful it was and how awesome it was, I started going around the house and just dusting the crap out of everything. I was blowing uh, this this air duster left and right. Uh, I found you know dust where I didn't know there was dust, and it was so much fun. I've had so much fun with this stupid thing because of how powerful it is. And uh, they also suggest, as the name would make you believe, X Power A2 Aero Pro Multi Use Electric Computer Duster Dryer Air Pump Blower Black. It is also a good dryer. Um, so, you know, if you want some cold air to dry your hair, for example, you could use this. Uh, if you have a pet that is particularly patient, then you could also use it to dry your pet. Um, if you have, uh, one of the things that I thought it was great for is sometimes you've got to clean out like your vacuum. And so you, you know, you use soap and water to clean it out. But then one of the worst things that you can do is use a vacuum cleaner right after you've washed it because it's still wet in different places and therefore will collect that dust as almost a mud. And so after you wash it, you without heat can use this to dry it off. Um, I honestly don't recommend pointing it at your face. Um, okay. At one point I pointed it uh I was, I was like, I was up and I was about to move it to a different place. And so I sort of picked it up and it blew toward my ear and it was so loud in my ear that it actually caused it to ring afterwards. So just be careful. It's incredibly powerful. Um, but it's just, I mean, I didn't know that I could have so much fun with a multi-use electric computer duster dryer, air pump blower black. And alas, uh, I have. So I 53 bucks. So worth it for the joy, the fun, and the clean um, that I have been able to to count on around me. Oh, and then also if you've got a partner, it's really fun to just sort of um, stealthily plug it in and then suddenly turn on the the the, the device and, and point it their way. That's also kind of fun too. Sounds so, like you were blown away. I was mm. blown away, Kevin. That's exactly <laughs> right. I 
was blown uh, away. <laughs> I felt that. I can't hear you over it. Yeah, wow. Actually, just I just thought some, about that. Yeah, Burke is, I Burke that. is probably screaming like, please don't do that to the microphone. Sorry, Burke. <laughs> um, well, now there's some dust in the air, and that means that uh, it's time for this episode to blow away. If you have questions, thoughts, concerns, etc., your home screens that are aesthetic AF, uh, email us. It's stt at twit.tv. Uh, let me know how your purchase of the X-Power A2 Aero Pro Multi-Use Electric Computer Duster Dryer Air Pump Blower Black has gone. Uh, and if you've had as much fun with it as I have, you can, of course, uh, check out the show live by tuning in every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, to You just head to twit.tv slash live and you can check out the show live. But hey, you don't need to be here live if you don't want to. We offer the podcast as a download via RSS through subscription in both audio and video formats. You just head to twit.tv slash STT, click on audio or video, and we've got it in all the different places you might want it. Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, etc. Matthew, if folks want to follow you online, where do they go to do so? Um, I want to encourage everyone to sign up for my new newsletter called What's New in Shortcuts. It's at matthewcastanelli.com slash newsletter. And this will basically keep you up to date on all of the shortcuts catalog stuff I'm doing. There's going to be new shortcuts every week for both free and for members. And then I'm going to be uh, basically announcing my streaming schedule and stuff like that in there. So good way to keep up casually. You don't have to deal with all of my tweets all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and if you want to follow me online, I'm at Micah Sargent on pretty much all of the social media networks. Uh, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to all the different things that I do. Uh, and stay tuned for Chihuahua Coffee Plus, which is coming out <laughs> later this year. Not actually. Sorry. Um, until next time, it is time to say goodnight to your smart assistants. Good, good afternoon. Uh, oh, not good night. I keep saying good night. got a new it's recording not... time. <laughs> <sighs> got to change that. Uh, good morning, good say... afternoon, and good night. There, there we go. you go. It could be any of them, depending on where you are. <laughs> I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on Twit.tv, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to twit.tv TNW. Make sure you do that and you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.